wetlands are, are so important in a number of ways. And I guess we've learned a lot about wetlands over the last 50 years, but they're so crucial to a lot of things in our environment, to wildlife, to clean water, to clean air, to uh, soil conservation. So uh, aside from the, I guess, the environmental aspects, then there, there, there's recreation and economy. I mean, uh, we depend on water for, for our own lives. The river is this amazing green corridor through this highly developed Midwestern part of the United States. And I can go down to the river and I can see an amazing ecosystem still functioning. And I can witness spectacular migrations of birds and see fishes coming up on the floodplains to spawn. As the wetlands are important to preserving the ecosystem, the locks and dams on the Mississippi are critical to maintaining year-round transportation of cargo, products such as grain, coal, and petroleum fueling the nation's economy. The Melvin Price Locks and Dam here in Alton, Illinois is the newest of the 29 on the Mississippi. This is a navigational lock and dam. Some people uh, ask us if we uh, have anything to do with flood control, and we have very little to do with flood control. The reason we're here is to lock uh, boats, commercial boats primarily, up and down the river. It took a little over 10 years to uh, build um, the lock and dam, and the cost was right at a billion dollars. On the economic side, we lock around 75 million tons of cargo through Mel Price every year. Most of that is grain products, and most of that is destined for overseas markets. Grain products are going southbound. In return, we lock uh, coal and petroleum northbound that fuels factories in Chicago and some of the other cities. This is a large floodplain river system. Uh, what that would mean is that from year to year, the river channel would never stay the same, would constantly move. We've put in uh, you know, structures out there to make sure it stays there, but yet it's still dynamic. It constantly wants to reclaim its floodplain, and so you can just see how powerful that is. Every great river floods, but in 1993, parts of the Mississippi River watershed received nearly twice the normal annual rainfall in a very short period of time. As the Mississippi spilled over its banks, it proved once again the power of the river. Floods like the 1993 flood where, you know, it, it overflowed and, and went over, you know, levees and that, and it decided that it wanted to go where it wanted to, to be. We lost a lot of houses here in town. After the flood, they had to take them out. We lost a lot of people out of town. I think we had around 1,000 people, now it's 600 and something. We lost a lot. Usually we're facing drought, but in 93, uh, you had a veritable inland ocean here. It could have definitely ruined everything in terms of the livelihood and the, and the community, but Grafton and Elsa and, and Alton all bounced back. The people who live along the river, who, who have been part of this area for generations, knew that they were going to bring it back. And I will tell you, it's better today than it ever was in 93. While the river's power must be respected, its nurturing qualities draw people to live near it, play on it, and for many, to work on the river. First boat I ever rode, the captain told me, he says, if you wear out your pair of shoes, he says, you'll be out here forever. And I said, well, these are already wore out, so I guess I'm gonna be here a while. Out here, the scenery changes, you're moving. I just think you feel free out here. My grandfather worked in the river. My dad did for the ferry system. They were all seamen. My grandfather was a port engineer. My dad was an engineer. 
and uh, I worked in a, I work on a river. My son worked on a river. I got cousins that work on a river. If the river wasn't here tomorrow, it, it, we'd be lost. Uh, it's just a livelihood. Yeah, you, get, you grew up. I grew up with it. You know. The Mississippi is the true life waters of the United States. Um, it touches so many lives. It's an incredible story of America. You've got so much heritage, so much geography. Uh, the people that live along the river are so colorful and, and diverse. The Mississippi really is the heart of America. It's the artery that uh, so much of the life of America pulses through. And the river is an amazing place to me. It's, it's a second home. When you talk about what a river man is, he's as comfortable here on the river as he is in his own backyard. Um, he has to love two things. He has to love his family at home and the river. I have two families. Memphis, Tennessee, a river town, once a thriving market and depot for king cotton from the Delta, shipped both north and south by steamboat. Memphis uh, was the center and shipping uh, point for a vast cotton growing region. You could draw a, a circle uh, with a, a radius of 100, 150 miles and that whole area of rich cotton land uh, sent its cotton to be classed and uh, sold uh, in Memphis and shipped out of Memphis to, to New England mills, to European mills. Traveling the river along with the cotton crop was another homegrown product, a new musical sound called the Memphis Blues. Memphis has got a, a combination of people that stayed here, you know? You had people like W.C. Handy that came out of Florence, Alabama. He was an educated player. Then you had people like Junior Wells that was born here. Then you had people like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, that came to Memphis in order to find gigs as, you know, with their style of Delta music, which when they got to Bill Street, that music from the Delta was so jumping and so energizing that the people in Memphis they added their educated style to the field style, and they created a Memphis sound. As I began to, to talk with people and learn from people, I learned that the river was different than Tennessee and different than Mississippi and different than Arkansas. The river was itself a state, and that's the way people looked at it. So, you know, you might live on Island 35 or Island 49 or on Mud Island, and, part, and those parts, that, that was literally your home base. My people come down the river uh, from Ohio uh, in a houseboat, a big houseboat. And my mom and daddy met on Mud Island. I was uh, born over there in 1924. And uh, the whole family, always moved together, everybody moved together. My daddy's people lived on the island and my uh, mama's people lived over there. We lived on fish and wild game meat. That was what we had to eat. You couldn't get to a store and you didn't have the money 